So one day I was scrolling through GitHub, nothing serious, just looking for some cool code to play with, when I stumbled upon Brainfuck. At first, I thought it was some kind of joke or a file that had been corrupted. I mean, it was just a chaotic mess of pluses, minuses, brackets, and arrows. But then I ran it, and somehow, it worked perfectly. I printed, subscribe to become a fellow codehead with this absolute madness, which you should do, by the way. I am once again asking for your financial support. And I realized there's a whole world of bizarre, stupid programming languages out there that people actually made just for the fun, the challenge, or just because they were pure masochists. And that little discovery got me thinking, what other weird-ass languages exist, and what if I actually tried to code in them? So yeah, that'll be today's video. We're going to explore five of the strangest ones, diving into how they came to be, why they exist, and even trying to code a little bit ourselves along the way. Oh, and by the way, I'm pretty sure you can download compilers for each language, and so you could compile them locally, but I'm too lazy, so I just went for the first online compiler I found. Links are in the description. Okay, first up is, you guessed it, Brainfuck, created by Urban Muller in 1993 as a minimalistic programming language designed to push the boundaries of what a language could do with only eight commands. It works on memory cells using symbols like plus, minus, greater than, less than, brackets, commas, and periods to manipulate data and output text. The purpose was never readability or practicality, it was pure brain exercise and fun for those who love a challenge. Here's a small snippet that iterates through numbers from 1 to 10 and then prints a sentence. And I know, it looks like random gibberish on your screen, a bunch of pluses, brackets, and arrows marching across the page, but when you run it, it works perfectly. It's like staring at a puzzle designed by a cat on a keyboard. And that's exactly the point. Moving on to Arnold C, a language designed by Lori Hardica in 2013. This one takes movie quotes from Arnold Schwarzenegger and uses them as programming keywords. Why would you create something like this, let alone code in it, is beyond me. But hey, who am I to judge? Your conditionals, loops, and print statements are all replaced with quotes like, It's showtime. Talk to the hand. And you are terminated. It's absurd, hilarious, and somehow actually functional. For example, a tiny program to take input from the user and print it would look something like this. Seeing your code literally speak Arnold's voice is a surreal but effective way to illustrate that programming can be playful and fun. Then we have Whitespace, an esoteric language released on April Fool's Day 2003. White space is unique because it only recognizes spaces, tabs, and line breaks. All other characters are ignored. To the human eye, the code appears completely blank, but hidden in those invisible characters is the logic that runs your program. For example, a tiny white space program that prints hello would look like a blank page, and only by running it do you see the output. It's a fascinating experiment in minimalism and a clever joke on programmers, showing that syntax can be invisible. Then we have Intercal, created in 1972, is another parody language designed to poke fun at the complexity and verbosity of contemporary programming languages of its time. It introduces concepts like come from instead of go to and requires politeness through keywords like please do and please give up, making coding feel like writing a formal letter rather than executing commands. It's confusing, humorous, and perfectly illustrates the links people go to to experiment with language design while satirizing programming culture. No wonder why this industry is so weird at the moment. Okay, finally, LOL code, born from meme culture in 2007, uses cat-like internet speak for syntax. Instead of normal commands, you type things like, hi, to start your program, i has a var to declare variables, visible to print output, and k thanks bye to end your program. A snippet that prints Hello World reads like a conversation with an overly excited cat. <laughs> Combining the joy of coding with nostalgia for early internet humor. And I'm pretty sure someone has already made a modern brain rot version of this. But for the sake of my last three brain cells, I won't be covering that today. So yeah, none of these languages are useful. Unless your goal is to confuse future archaeologists who dig up your GitHub. But hey, at least now you can flex that you can count to 10 in Arnold quotes. Thank you for sitting through yet another tech rant. And if you enjoyed it, leave a like and subscribe to become a fellow codehead.